everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part one of my new Let's Play series. This is Steins Gate, which has been very, very requested by you guys for quite a while. I'm finally, finally doing this. And I don't know too much about this game, except for the fact that it involves time travel. It is apparently one of the highest rated visual novels of all time. And it is quite long and has a lot of different games in the series. So it was a little overwhelming. But we're going to start at the beginning here. Um, I do have the original one. People told me, don't get the Elite version. Get the original version. So I have the original version here. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to finally play this visual novel that I've been putting off for so long. So we are going to just jump right into it. いたって正常だ。ここでは真実を語っているんであって、断じて中二病の妄想なんかじゃない。きっかけは本の些細なことだとしても、それが未来の大きな流れを決定づけてしまうこともある。また暗いことということは知っているか？知らないなら調べるの
My contact is wise to maintain silence. The whole area could be bugged. No, I was just talking to someone. Everything's fine. I'm about to infiltrate the assembly hall. So what I did was, uh, I was... It's recommended because there is, you know, it's, it's a very long visual novel. So what I did was I have the voices on for everybody else except the protagonist because I'm going to be voicing him. And I will speak after the other characters, but if you guys would prefer I don't do that because it will make it a lot longer. Let me know in the comments, but for now this is the way I'll do it unless, you know, I decide or you guys decide maybe it's not the best way to do it. Still no reply. Looks like they just want my report. It's too dangerous to waste time talking here anyway. Yeah, Dr. Nakabachi got the jump on us, but I'll make sure he tells us everything. Oh, what? The organization is already on the move? What, can I click that organization? Oh, ah, what did I do there? Ah, ah. <laughs> uh, left click. Oh, I, okay, I guess that doesn't really do anything either. I opened my eyes wide to match my shocked tone. The girl turns towards me in surprise. I sigh, shaking my head as I rub my temples. I see. So that's the choice. Oh my god. That's the choice of Steinsy. I have got to change this uh, text crawl speed. l Congro. Let Hold on, guys. Let me just check, take really quick to see if I can just do it from here. Okay, there we go. That's the thing about visual novels. You gotta have to, you have to find the flow. You gotta find the right configuration for things, so. Please bear with me. I speak the parting words, then pocket my cell phone. Steins Gate. Some know it as fate. To others, it is the will of God. You could count on one hand the people in this world aware of its true nature. In any case, we should begin the infiltration. I advance towards Radikon, which is just across the street from the train station. Of course, this is enemy territory. I can't just stride through the front door like an average person. I bypass the elevators and escalators and head to the 8th floor by the stairwell. But I only make it to the 7th floor before I have to stop and rest. Who's that on the phone? The girl, Sheena Mayu- oh boy. Mayuri, the joys of new, new games is trying to figure out the uh, pronunciations. Immediately resumes our conversation. She followed me all the way here, and she isn't even short of breath. I, on the other hand, am gasping for air with my hands on my knees. Who would have thought an eight-story building would be so tall? I turn to Mayuri while wiping the sweat off my brow. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Oh, wow. Thanks, Okarin, oh, Okarin, oh, I've already forgotten, god damn it. <laughs> I should have like a little, um, like, book next to me for the pronunciation, so I remember. I'm sure the more she says it, the more, like, I'll, I'll remember. Mayuri smiles happily and doesn't pry any further. As always, she's quick to understand my position. We've known each other since we were both little. Mayuri is 16, two years younger than me, so she's more like a little sister than a typical childhood friend. I've been looking out for her as long as I can remember. I used to hope that Mayuri might become the key to Steinsgate, but now I've reconsidered. I don't want that terrible fate for her. She should live a normal life. Ooh, I'm wondering if when, uh, you know, he's talking at the beginning, I'm assuming it's this guy who was talking at the beginning said, you know, I wouldn't have lost her. I wonder if it's her he was talking about. Maybe that's why he keeps going back in time to try and save her? That is my present wish. We continue to the 8th floor and enter the assembly hall. In front of us stands a cheap-looking stage with a podium and a sign reading, Dr. Nakabachi's Time Machine Press Conference. Okarin, Okarin. Okay, so she says his name a lot, so hopefully I won't forget. Mayuri insists on calling me Okarin, but it's neither my real name nor my code name. It's just one of those annoying nicknames people use. How many times do I have to tell you? Don't call me Okarin. Huh? But I've always called you that. That was then. I, I've since- oh my gosh, even the- okay, so the text scroll for normal is okay, but the text scroll for the voices are not great. I might have to fix that too. I've since become 
Oh no, okay. Hoyuin Kyoma, the insane mad scientist hunted by secret organizations the world over. Mwahaha. Sorry guys, once again, let me see if I can figure out how to make the text scroll for the, um, the voice part go faster. I couldn't really see anything, so we're just gonna continue on. Maybe you guys can show me, uh, or tell me how to make the text scroll a little bit quicker for this part. But that's too hard to remember. In a, oh, in any case, Hoyuin Kiyoma is my true name. And besides, it doesn't even sound like Okabe Rintaro. You're weird, hee <laughs> hee. Cease your foolish laughter. Okabe Rintaro may be my real name, but I have rejected it, for it is stupid. <laughs> okay, I wonder if this is gonna come up where they're talking about the name, so... So, Okabe Rintaro is his real, real name. And so, I also hate the derivative, Okarin. Come on, it sounds like that elf boy's blue pipe thing. So, Okarin, can I ask you something? In one ear and out the other. She's been calling me that for five years now, so maybe it's time to give up. What are we doing here? Wait. You followed me here without knowing why? Huh. Yep. She nods without dropping her smile. We're here for Dr. Nakabachi's press conference. We're standing in the assembly hall on the 8th floor of Radikon. It is here that the conference will be held. Dr. Nakabachi is an inventor. He appears on TV from time to time and has a few patent patents under his belt, but mostly he's treated as a curiosity. <laughs> press conference. But where are the reporters? Myri's right. I've scanned the entire hall, but there's no one who looks like a reputable rep a reporter or cameraman. There are only about ten of us standing in the hall, including me. Considering Nakabachi's moderate media presence and the fact he claims to have invented a time machine, I would have expected more. Could this be the organization working its twisted influence? I twist my lips into a sneer. I thought that Nakabachi was like me, a scientist fighting to overthrow the organization. But this press conference suggests other motives at work. Our enemies won't miss this chance. I prefer not to get wrapped up in his mess. Nevertheless, I'm interested in what he has to say. That's why I'm here, blowing an afternoon of my precious summer holiday. Mayuri ponders my utterance for a while before finally turning her head. You wrapped something? Is it his birthday too? I let out a sigh. Mayuri is known to not only make bad jokes, but to laugh at them too. She's always been special. Keep your guard up, Mayuri. I suspect this won't be a normal conference. I didn't even finish my sentence. Are we under attack? Are they trying to fry our brains with electromagnetic waves? Dust falls from the ceiling as the floor shakes. Oh, am I gonna have to get into a fight? <laughs> I am interested to see, like, is there actually gonna be parts where maybe there's some point and click stuff, maybe I have to find information, or is it just gonna be like a straight visual novel where I make choices, but that's about it. We're definitely under attack. Because there's all of these clues, so I assume that those have to come into play at some point. It's coming from above, but we're on the top floor. All that's above is the roof. An earthquake? Is it magnitude 2? What does magnitude mean again? No time to deal with Mayuru's con uh, confusion. Something's not right about this. I bolt out of the conference hall and run up the stairs to the roof, ignoring the no trespassing signs. My I'm pretty sure I'm saying her no her name wrong. Why do I want to keep calling her Mahiru? <laughs> God damn it! I'm thinking. <laughs> I I don't know if I've said Mahiru or Mahiri. I want to say Mahiru, but I'm thinking of like Donka Ropa. God damn it! I gotta be careful about how I say her name. The door is open. Upon closer inspection, I realize the lock has been broken. 
I open the door and see a billowing cloud of black smoke. There's some kind of uh, phosphorescent dust sparkling in the air. An explosion? I can't believe it. Was there really an explosion? My heart is racing. Damn, I don't know what to do. Should I run away? But why an explosion? Terrorists? No, that doesn't fit. I mean, how do you explain that? Oh, that's gotta be the time machine, right? What the? A strange machine is sitting in the middle of the roof. It's huge, maybe three meters tall and looks kind of like a satellite. Did that thing cause the shaking just now? Who put it here? Was it Dr. Nakabachi? Is this part of his presentation? Impossible. Even if that were the case, how the hell would he get it up here? My head is bursting with questions. As I search for the courage to approach the machine, a throng of reporters and building staff bursts onto the rooftop. They look just as confused as I am. Please stay back, everybody. And then a woman, who I assume is a staff member, appears to wave us back. The press conference will proceed as scheduled. Is she trying to hide something? Her response was unusually quick, almost like she's trying to keep me away from the device. I've got a nose for conspiracies, and this stinks of a cover-up. What are they hiding? What was that explosion? I want to know, but I shouldn't risk getting any closer. I turn and leave. But not because I'm scared or anything like that. Staff members lead us all back to the 8th floor. Mayuri is nowhere to be seen. She's not in the event hall, either. I find her on the 7th floor. Several capsule toy machines are lined up next to a plate reading, Birthplace of the Japanese PC. She's gazing upon them with a wistful look. I breathe a sigh of relief, then take out my phone. Oh, well, can I, I can actually- Oh, I was like, do I get to do some things on the phone? It's me. I've got a bad feeling about this. Something's happening and I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I know. Don't worry. It won't do anything to jeopardize the mission. El Sai Congru. After I speak the words and hang up, I am able to wipe the sweat from my forehead. My sweat is cold. Half of me hopes something will happen. The other half fears the same thing. I put away my phone and look back at Mayuri. She's still staring at those capsule toys. She doesn't seem to be worried about the explosion at all. I can't decide if she's level-headed or just air-headed. What are you doing? Hmm? Hmm? Well, I really want an Upa. Just as I thought. Mayuri points to a capsule machine. The signs on the front say, Raynet Kakaru 3D Character Doll Series. Raynet Kakaru is a popular anime series with its own card game spin-off, Raynet Access Battlers. They even hold international tournaments. Upa is the series mascot character. It resembles an um, elliptical egg with limbs sticking out like some kind of deformed dog. It's what they call an ugly cute character. High school girls find these creatures adorable for some reason. Last year, an ugly frog character was the rage. Its name escapes me, though. <laughs> like, thinking back to, like, 2009, was are they, like, referencing the annoying frog, you know? <laughs> I think that's what its name was. Oh, boy, what a time trip. And then go for it. I can't guarantee you'll get an Upa, though. Mahiri gives me a troubled smile. But... But Mayushi is all out of 100 yen coins. Mayushi is what Mayuri calls herself sometimes. <laughs> I guess she is a little special. According to her, it's supposed to have a star at the end. <laughs> Nippa! Mayushi. But who really cares? So can I borrow 100 yen, please? She holds her hands out with a look like a begging puppy. Looks like she was planning this from the very beginning. Well, at least she didn't say gimme. Do you think it's that easy, Mayuri? You'll get no money from me. Instead, I'll show you just how harsh life really is. I pull out a 100 yen coin, set it into the machine slot, and spin the lever. Huh? 
I open the capsule and take out the contents. Mahiri leans forward eagerly to see what I got. It's an upa, and it's metal. A metal upa. I'm just waiting for him to just step on and be like, life's a bitch. Deal with it. Is it rare? Oh, he's <laughs> like, well, I'll keep it then. It is my money. Super rare. While I examine the metal upa, a boy who is watching us tries his luck on the same Raynet machine. Aw, oh, a normal upa. He looks at my metal upa in resentment. I turn to see Mayuri's sparkling eyes also fixed on the upa. Hey, high school girl, you're acting like a little kid. Hmm. I give this creature of metal to you, Mahiri. So much for showing her like life is tough. Honestly, I don't want it. <laughs> really? Are you sure, Okarin? The names, uh, Hoyuin. Oh my! I I prefer Okarin. I'm pretty sure I'm still saying that wrong, but I'm saying it better than this freaking name, Hoyuin Kiyoma. <laughs> Thank you, Okarin. Is she doing it on purpose? Thank you all for coming to Dr. Nakabashi's Time Machine press conference. I hear the announcement from, from the floor above. Sounds like they're starting. I head to the stairs, but Mayuri doesn't follow. Let's go, Mayuri. Mm, just a sec. I gotta write my name. She's preoccupied with the metal upa. I go on ahead. Ooh, I wonder if something's gonna happen to her while they're separated. Without further ado, I am pleased to introduce the inventor, Dr. Nakabashi. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. <laughs> Dr. Nakabashi enters to sparse applause. He walks up to the podium. He's already wearing a frown for some reason. I can feel his irritation from here. Dr. Nakabashi, I am Dr. Nakabashi. Thank you all for coming. The audio is kind of weird, like it just seems to cut off very abruptly with some of the voices, but meh. Nakabachi takes the microphone and begins to speak, his voice brimming with confidence. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin with my theory of time travel, the greatest scientific breakthrough of the century. Time machine? Did he really build a time machine? Mahiri, uh, uh, it's tough though because I'm like because I have rent uh, the guy's voice um, disabled, I don't have him saying her voice, so I just have to assume I'm saying it correctly. Mahiri appears after writing her name on the metal upa. She's a bit late in more ways than one. What did she think a time machine presentation would be about? That metal upa is definitely going to come into play at some point. Maybe I use the metal upa as some sort of like something to do with the time machine, maybe to get her back. Maybe something happens to her. Because her name's on it? I don't know. It's gotta, there's gotta be some sort of significance. I take another look around the room. There are about 20 people now, including us, but still no media presence to speak of. So this is the extent of Dr. Nakabashi's fame. No one believes that he invented a time machine. I was interested in what he had to say, true, but my expectations were no higher than the rest of the onlookers. And a good thing they weren't, as he proceeds to explain his time machine desi uh, design, my curiosity quickly turns to disappointment, then anger. Doctor! <laughs> My roar silences Nakabachi and draws the eye of every person in the room. Do you take us for fools? Who the hell are you? Who the hell am I? Someone who knows you for a fraud. That's who. 
You stole your theory from John Teeter, and you call yourself an inventor? Someone throw this man out. You're the one we should throw out, Doctor. Have you no shame? You have no right to call yourself an inventor. Shut your mouth, you little pest. Just then, someone grabs my arm from behind. Quite convinced it's an official here to throw me out, I turn around to glare him down. Unhand me, you... Huh? I was waiting for you, fiend. <sighs> it's a girl about my age. Her intense stare seems to challenge me. I take a step back. Her face looks somehow familiar. Where have I seen her before? Oh. We haven't met, but I know her face. It's Makise Kurus Kurisu. A few days ago, my friend Daru showed me a magazine article uh, titled Girl Genius Gives Lecture in Akibara. The title was about a 17-year-old girl who had just graduated from an American university. Her thesis was even published in a ma uh, major scientific journal. Blech. Oh, a lot of talking. A lot of talking. Girl genius. Makise Kurisu. I recognize the stubborn-looking girl from her photograph. She's even wearing the exact same scowl. What business could such a genius have with me? She takes a quick look around the room, then turns back to me with a stern expression. Could you come with me for a moment? What's with the attitude? She's obviously not staff, and there's no way that the Makise, uh, the Makise Kurisu would be working with someone like Dr. Nakab- Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dr. Nakabachi. Please forgive me, guys. You know how I am with names. Ugh. Which, especially when they throw multiple names at me at once. Which means no. You're with the organization. Huh? Their tendrils have gotten this far. And I've made a grave mistake. Stop fooling around and come with me. My outburst has already attracted too much attention. Nakabachi in particular looks like he wants to rip my head off. It must be mortifying to be exposed as a fraud by a bright young man like myself. Anyways, I mustn't draw any more attention to myself. If the organization gets wind of my presence here, it could endanger Mahiri. Not to say any, uh, to say nothing of these ignorant, uh, <laughs> To say nothing of these ignorant civilians. I let Makise Kurisu lead me out of the assembly hall. Try anything and people are sure to notice. What will your superior say then? What are you talking about? She glares at me, quite fiercely at that. Attractive though she may be, there is no innocent in her. Uh, there's no innocence in her eyes. A beautiful agent, unmatched in cruelty. <laughs> He's like, that's my fetish. My heart beats in exhilaration from the danger. Looks like chaos really does get my blood pumping. Wow, I wasn't far off. Hee hee hee. I just need to ask you something. What makes you think I'll answer? I know how the organization operates. What's with this organization stuff? Instead of answering, I take out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me. I've been caught by an organization agent. Yes, it's Makise Kurisu. She's a dangerous one. No, it's fine. I'll find a way to... <clears throat> Kurisu suddenly snatches the phone from my hand. What skill? I didn't have time to react. What are you doing? Huh? Your phone's off. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Her eyes pierce deep into my soul. I quickly look away. She's good. Is she trying to attack my sense of identity in order to cause a mental break? Recover. This isn't enough to sway me. Your techniques don't work on me. But I'll tell you anyway, that's no ordinary phone. It's designed to deactivate the moment it leaves my hand. Mwahaha! <laughs> Such measures are necessary to maintain uh, secrecy. I know things that could get me killed. 
I quickly retrieved my phone and wiped the, wiped the cold sweat off my forehead. Whew, that was close. So, so you talk to yourself. Ugh. This is bad. Ordinary methods don't work on Makase Kurisu, the genius girl. On the contrary, she's the one psyching me out. Damn, looks like I'll have to make a tactical retreat. If I can just find an opening. Suddenly, Kurisu steps up to me with a serious expression. She stares right at me, her huge eyes blazing with strengths of will. Such fire. I can't look away. Could someone with such pure eyes really be an organization agent? What were you trying to tell me earlier? Earlier? What are you talking about? About 15 minutes ago, before the conference started. Nonsense. This is the first time we've met. I was with Mayuri in that Upa toy 15 minutes ago. You were trying to tell me something, right? You looked really upset. Is this a trap? It does seem like one of the organization's dirty tricks. But would this girl do something that underhanded? You look like you were going to start crying any second. Why? Have we met before? She seems sincere. That makes her even more suspicious. That's right, don't let her beauty fool you. She's a cold, calculating secret agent. If I show the slightest vulnerability, I'm done for. And how do you know my name? My knowledge has no limits. <laughs> this guy sounds like such a knob. I am a mad scientist, after all. Genius girl, our next meeting shall be his enemies. <laughs> Guys, he sounds like he knows he's in a video game. Farewell. Mwahahaha. <laughs> yeah, he's one to call the Mayuri uh, special. He's, he's a little special himself. I spin around and take off down the stairs, ignoring her call to stop. Like I'd listen to the enemy. <laughs> Maybe the organization doesn't even exist and he's just all in his head. Damn the organization. They must be serious. If they're sending in agents like her. I run all the way down to the fourth floor and check behind me. Once I'm convinced Makase Kurisu is not tailing me, I sigh while rubbing my temples. But I can't let them capture me yet. Well then, what do I do now? Oh, also nice to leave, uh, leave your friend behind. My mission was to attend the conference and evaluate Dr. Nakabachi's research. Now that I know he's a fraud, there's no real point in going back. I guess I'll just go home. But wait, aren't I forgetting something important? Let's see now, what is it? Damn. <laughs> I left Mayuri behind. And not someone, something. He's like, I left something behind. I knew she'd be a liability. I shouldn't have brought her along. I was trying to pri uh, prioritize her safety, but got careless. I'll try calling her first. If she's alright, then I can just have her meet me here. With that thought on my mind, I take out my phone. I turn it on. Oh, can I actually use the phone now? And it rings, just as I do. I want to use the phone! Oh, here we go. An email? Can I actually click on it? It's not just a regular email. There's a video attached. And it's from an unknown address. I open the video file with some trepidation. Hmm? There's nothing but noise. Is this a prank? Or some sort of Makase Kurisu style attack? Maybe the noise is some sort of make people go crazy frequency. No wait, I don't remember giving her my mail address, so I'm probably just thinking too hard. I curse myself for being gullible enough to play the video. I have more pressing matters to deal with anyway. I've got to be able to use this at some point, right? Like, oh, man... I want to be able to actually, like, click on things, and yeah. I stop the video and call Mayuri's, Mayuri's phone from my address book. Damn it. Mayuri, why won't you pick up? Looks like I'll have to go back to the assembly hall. But things will get messy if I bump heads with Makise Kurisu again. Wait. Don't tell me. 
Did that femme fatale kidnap Myri? Damn you! Is that how I, is that how the organization operates? Leaving without Myri isn't an option. Call me overprotective, but she's like a little sister to me, and there's a very real danger she might wander off somewhere the moment I let her out of my sight. Mayuri has always been like that. I never know if she'll be there when I turn to look. In a sense, that's why I became Hoyuin Kiyoma. I have to go back for her. The thought of climbing back to the 8th floor is depressing, but I have no choice. I love him. He likes to think of himself as like this super genius scientist, and he talks like he's some sort of, you know, like an anime protagonist. And he even changes his name because he's like, my old name was stupid and boring. I so it's like, so now I have got a new name. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> oh, he's such a dork. When I get back to the assembly hall, Doctor Nakabachi's conference has just finished. Nobody is on stage, and the phony inventor has already left. The twenty or so members of the audience are starting to pack up. I soon find Mahiri. She's in the corner, looking lost. Well, at least she wasn't kidnapped. Even better, I don't see Makase Kurisu anywhere. Eh, looks like I scared her off. So be it. I'll let her go this time. Still, I keep my eyes peeled as I run up to Mayuri. Mayuri, why didn't you pick up? We're leaving. Ah, Okari! Metal Upa ga inakunatchata! Okari, my metal Upa ran away! She turns to me with a forlorn expression. Ran away? What, it's alive? That's a little hard to believe. I think I dropped it. I see, so she was looking for it. Not like it really matters. Forget about it. You can always get another one. Damn, he's like, if I'd known that, I would have kept it. No way, Metal Upa sold upwards of 10,000 yen online, you know. Wait, what? That toy was worth that much? Think, Mayuri. Where did you drop it? I don't know. That's why I'm looking. And even if we find it, you can't sell it, okay? Muahaha. That's 10,000 yen. Uh, that 10,000 yen will fund my research. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be worthless because she scratched her name in it. I said you can't sell it. It even has Mayushi's name on it. Thus begins our search for the metal Upa. Upa, Upa, come out, come out, wherever you are. Mayuri tries calling its name. I don't know if she truly expects a response. By the way, Tutaru is Mayuri's catchphrase. It means... Actually, I've never bothered to ask what it means. Anyway, the metal Upa is nowhere to be found. Maybe she didn't drop it in the assembly hall, but on the seventh floor landing near the capsule toy machines. Another possibility is that someone with an eye for rare items uh, pilfered it. Just imagining the smug grin on that person's face makes me writhe in envy. What kind of man steals a helpless girl's toy? Is there nothing in his heart but the lust for money? Dude, you were totally thinking of yourself, though. Okay, <laughs> yeah, sounds like you, Okarin. Whoa, wasn't expecting that from Mahiri. <coughs> oh. Oh, that's horrible. What was that? Was that a scream? I think so. Only the presenter and a few other people are left in the assembly hall. Including Mayuri and me, less than half the audience remains. Everyone looks at each other anxiously startled by the scream. Even I cannot suppress a shiver. First the explosion on the roof, now this. What's going on here? Mayuri squeezes my hand tight. Stay here, Mahiri. I take a deep breath, prepare myself, and head in the direction of the scream. The echoes lead me down a dark, empty hallway on the same floor. I'm pretty sure it came from around the corner. I crouch down and turn the corner slowly, keeping my eyes and ears peeled for any sign of danger. And there, at the end of the passage, I see it. There's something on the ground. No, someone. Motionless. 
Who is it? The clothes are familiar. It can't be. Oh shit. Oh shit, what? She's dead? What? I thought it was gonna be the, um, the inventor. Makase Kurisu. Her face is turned away, but I know it's her. The imper- the impertinent- oh my gosh, these words. The impertinent genius girl I just fought with ten minutes ago is now face down in a pool of bright red blood. Oh, that must be- maybe that's the girl he was talking about that he couldn't save? She's dead. I was not expecting that. I thought it was going to be the inventor for sure. No, but why? Suddenly I realize that I'm shaking. I want to run. Run away. I shouldn't have come. This is wrong. Someone killed Makase Kurisu. There's no other explanation. Who would do such a thing? There's no one else here. <laughs> I twist around in shock. Some other men have followed me. And every one of them is ghastly pale. They must have seen the body. Call the police! A man cries out in panic. At this, everyone else starts screaming and running away. I follow them, of course. There's absolutely no reason to stay here. Please let me be able to, like, click on things and try and solve the murder. I want to- I want to do that. I want this to be- I want this to be like Phoenix Wright Investigation or Donkin Ropa. Come on. Concern for Makise Kurisu is superseded by my instinctive urge to flee. When I get back to the assembly hall, Mahiri is waiting for me with tears in her eyes. Okari, what happened to Okarin? We're leaving. I grab Mahiri's hand and run. I race down the stairs, trying to drive the image of Kurisu's, uh, Kurisu's dead body from my mind. But I can't. The redness of her blood is burned into my mind more than the sight of the body itself. That was my first time seeing a dead body. Is that what it's like? When I realized that she was dead, I felt chilling terror and a surge of nausea. But that was all I felt. Fear and disgust. Shouldn't there be something more? I guess I just didn't know her that well. Well, uh, well I mean... Start a little bit slow, but that uh, escalated quickly. I finally stop once we get out to the main street, Chuo Dori. My chest pounds, my breathing labored from running down the stairs at full speed. Hey, what happened? You look really pale. Mayuri doesn't seem to comprehend the situation. I guess it's because she didn't see the body. She's not even breathing hard. She looks slow, but she's actually pretty fast on her feet. Someone died. Huh? I take several deep breaths. The color of that blood still stains my brain. But I've calmed down a bit. Makase Kurisu is dead. And I don't know who the killer is. Sirens in the distance. I guess an ambulance will be here soon. Then the police will arrive and this area will become a crime scene. But for now, the crowds milling through Akihabara have no idea what has happened. Everyone is going about their business as usual. The never-ending search for electronics, moe, and porn. Just another day in Akihabara. I take my phone out of my pocket, perhaps out of reflex. I'm not sure what I plan to do with it. Oh, I know, my friend Daru. I'll tell him what happened just now since he knows about Makise Kurisu. I suppose it might be disrespectful to the victim, but my adrenaline is pumping. I can't make calm decisions after witnessing something like this firsthand. That's how humans are, after all. We're not as special as we like to believe. At the end of the day, we're nothing but dirty, slime-like flesh. Our souls fester like semen left to rot in the womb. Oh, dude's got away with words. That's how we humans are. While wallowing in a bit of angst, I begin to type on my phone. Like, how does he know someone stabbed her? Did he see? He said he just saw the body face down and, and the blood. Someone stabbed Makase Kurisu. Don't know who. Looked bad. Hope she's okay. I don't know if she was stabbed. Oh, yeah. Just seems like the most logical explanation given the amount of blood in the absence of a gunshot. On the other hand, I didn't write that she was dead, even though I'm pretty sure she was. 
I can't exactly explain why I didn't. If I had to say, I guess I felt like writing it down would set it in stone. It might make me feel guilty as well. The thought brings a smirk to my face. It's not like I'm the one who killed her. Why should I feel guilty? I just saw someone's death up close, and only a few minutes later I'm smiling. Am I really that cruel and cold? Well, I am a fiendish mad scientist, so it suits me. I finish typing and place my thumb over the send button. And then, I press down. No. Oh. Okay. What? What was that? Wait, look around. They're gone. Summer break. Noon. The busiest street in town. Just now, thousands of pedestrians vanished into thin air. Is this a dream? Am I hallucinating? I don't know. But they're gone. I saw them vanish with my own two eyes. I stand petrified, speechless, and alone on the empty street. Desper uh, desperate to find someone, anyone, I look up. And there, at the top of Radicon. Sticking out from the 8th floor event hall where we just were. Oh, did he just go back in time? Oh! Okay, never mind. Is that a crash- uh, is a crash satellite? Hmm. Alright, it's chapter one, time travel paranoia. Oh. Hey you, can you see us? Why won't you answer? I'm asking you a question. <laughs> yes, you, on the other side of the monitor. Hmm, your silence only strengthens my hypothesis. I suppose that from your perspective, it appears that we are the ones inside the monitor. Hee hee hee, but that's where you're wrong. For it is you who are inside. Your reality is nothing but lies and shadows. Naturally, that includes you, too. True reality is on this side of the screen. Don't believe me? I don't blame you. Few are those who can handle the truth. But no matter. I shall speak to you in simpler terms, easy enough for even you to understand. Thanks. You are a little bit of a dick. This is the Future Gadget Laboratory, located in the Akihabara District of Tokyo. We call it simply, The Lab. Our purpose is to shatter the system and plunge the world into chaos. Really? You shouldn't do bad things, Okarin. Quiet. I'm a mad scientist, remember? From the station, head down Chewy Dori until you reach- Oh boy. Shuihichu uh, <laughs> Station, then take a left onto Kurameibashi Dori. In the alley before the traffic light, you'll find the rundown oh Ohiyama building. The lab is on the second floor. Oh, don't tell me I have to actually do that. Oh boy. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> on the first floor is a store of ill repute called the Brawn Tube Workshop. You can't miss it. But hey, I'm excited if I can actually like move around. It deals exclusively in CRT monitors, of all things. Can you imagine? Even in the heart of Akihabara's electric town, the demand for CRTs is practically non-existent. But the proprietor of the Braun Tube Workshop, Tinoji, is also the owner of the building. That's how you can afford- uh, that's how he can afford to maintain his ridiculously niche hobby shop even as land values continue to rise. He may seem a rough sort, but he was no match for my charisma. Now the entire second floor is mine, for next to nothing. Mwahaha. I digress. The Future Gadget Laboratory is currently experiencing a severe shortage of manpower. We welcome dedicated scientists from all fields to apply. At present, our researchers are... Okarin, Okarin. Soko wa labo men te iwanakya. Shozoku kenkyu in janakute. Okarin, Okarin, you've got to say lab mems, not researchers. Our lab mems, laboratory members, are three. I am the founder of the Future Gadget Lab, Lab Mem Number 001, the insane mad scientist, Hoyuen Kiyoma. Okarin te yobikata no hou ga kawaii no ni. Okarin is cuter, though. Next, we have our resident cosplayer and only female member, Lab Mem Number 2, Shina Mayuri. Really? She's just the cosplayer? Nice to know that the one female there is just like there for eye candy? Tettene! Mayushiri desu! Kiru nja nakute tsukuru no ga shumi da yo! 
Dotaru, call me Mayushi. I like making costumes more than wearing them. Not to say that cosplayers are just there for eye candy, but it's just like, of course, the one female there is just like, I like to make clothes. It's like, come on. Although, um, there seems to be a lot of female characters from the beginning uh, video, so I'm assuming we're going to get some more. And last, we have our resident super hacker, lab mem number three, Hashida Itaru. Super hacker, super hacker, joko. Stop calling me that. It's super hacker, duh. Here at the Future Gadget Laboratory, we devote ourselves to the art of invention. For details, see our lab's homepage. Our top priority, of course, is to develop weapons for the war with the Dark Dominion, but that research has spawned a number of offshoot inventions. In fact, that's all it spawned. Our arsenal of future gadgets is up to eight, but this is just the beginning. I have a total of 108 inventions to create. Like in that tennis manga, right? I get it. No, it's the, uh, it's the number of earthly desires in mortals, you channel junkie. And I thought I told you not to interrupt me when I'm talking. I've really got to check out all of these things. Yeah, I wouldn't want you to interrupt you talking to yourself. I'm not talking to myself, can't you see? I'm talking to the person behind the monitor. Ah! Oh, he just grinned. <laughs> what are you grinning about, damn you? You don't even exist outside that monitor. And way to assume my gender, sir. Just say, don't look at me. I don't think that's going to work. It appears our attempts to communicate have failed. It's sad to see someone so deeply in denial of reality. Maybe they think we're in the game? I doubt it's even occurred to them. But aren't your 2D girlfriends the same way? <laughs> That's different. Those girls are my wives. Oh, typical the, you know nerdy looking hacker who's obsessed with anime waifus nobody cares about your harem but mayushi touched upon a very interesting theme you know what if we're actually just characters in a game any way we can know for sure no come on such questions are meaningless. Our time is better spent thinking of ways to destroy the system. Chunibyo, otsu. Nice chu- oh boy, Chunibyo, bro. I definitely have to look up all of these tips. I step back from the monitor. He does just seem like a crazy person. <laughs> Displayed on the, on the screen is the ugly cute character Alpaca Man. I think that's just ugly. This is a game called Alpaca Man 2 where you speak to Alpaca Man via microphone and watch him react. Oh! Oh, what was that game for the Dreamcast that they're probably riffing on? Like, Seaman? The game exploded in popularity when it was released 10 years ago, but personally, I find only the ugly part of Ugly Cute to be true. And if this is taking place in 2009, Dreamcast came out around 1999, so that would kind of make sense. I feel like that is riffing on Seaman. I bought it yesterday. 500 yen used, headset included. I turned to Daru with a menacing glare. Shut it, Haka. I'm no chu- oh boy, Chunibyo patient. I sweep my hair back and flash a devilish, devilish grin. I am Hoyuin Kiyoma. That's your character's name, right? Oh, Daru. Your communication skills are beyond repair. I'll have you know, I go to a ton of offline meets, and I'm always the life of the party. This fat, bespeckled guy is my brother-in-arms and right-hand man, Hashida Itaru, nicknamed Daru. He's a hardcore otaku. You can always find him in front of the computer, playing games and watching anime. He has 2D, w uh, 2D wives on whom he cheats with 3D maids. I don't agree with his preferences, but to him, anything's fine as long as it's moe. He's the reliable and skilled partner who brings my ideas to fruition. Despite his insistence that software is his forte, he shows remarkable aptitude with hardware as well. Ah, 
Ow, the needle bit my finger. Over here, nursing a pricked finger, we have Shina Mayuri, a 16-year-old high school student, if you can believe it. I've known her since we were both small. She's also an otaku. Nowhere near Daru's level, though. This ditzy girl's in charge of the lab's official costume division, for women, and today she's working on costumes at her usual leisurely pace. Why does the future gadget laboratory need costumes for women? That's what I want to know. It doesn't. <laughs> the truth is, Mayuri is completely useless. Still, there's no way I would ever kick her out. After all, she was the first ever to join the future gadget laboratory. I still remember the day Mayuri first came to the lab. It was spring. She said to me, Mayushi is Okarin's hostage. I belong here. Well, that certainly was cryptic. But her offer was my salvation. For she was the first to join me on my, my magnificent quest. She saved me from a solitary life on the run from the organization. The more he talks, the more I think that this is just something that he's made up in his head that might actually be true, this organization. He just seems very paranoid. I will never forget her kindness. Mayuri doesn't have to be useful. Her being here is enough. So did Alpaca Man say anything? Nope, nothing. The human-faced alpaca inside the monitor was completely unresponsive. So unresponsive you'd think the game was bugged. Whatever, I give up. Never again will I play this boring game. Damn antisocial alpaca. I curse his name and smack the TV. As soon as I do... Hmm? The TV makes it sound like it's shorted, and then the screen goes blank. I change the channel. Nothing. I'm guessing I'm gonna have to go to that CRT place that you just mentioned. Check the power cable. Nothing. And I don't remember any of the places he mentioned. Whack it again. Nothing. I guess it's broken. Damn. This crummy TV is on lease from the Braun Tube Workshop downstairs. Oh, right. It's literally just downstairs. He talked about how he rented the space from the owner. It's probably just old. <laughs> You made Mr. Alpaca angry. Damn. I'll have to get it repaired later. I turn off the TV and lie down on the couch. I'm fed up with the humidity of Japanese summers. I stare at a uh, conspicuous stain on the ceiling while fanning myself. I close my eyes. And what naturally comes to mind is that impossible scene I saw an hour ago. Oh boy, so this is... Okay, I thought this was a flashback. They're gone. As I left RoddyCon, everyone vanished before my eyes. I can't explain it. And it wasn't just the people on the street. The people in the stores, gone. In the restaurants, gone. Even the cars vanished, drivers and all. And it all happened in the blink of an eye. Suddenly, an empty city spread before me. I could still hear the music from the stores, but those catchy melodies were the only sounds of life remaining. Heat was rising from the asphalt in waves, but I felt only a cold chill down my spine. I just stood there, breathless, until... What's wrong? Mayuri's voice brought me back to reality. Mayuri hasn't disappeared. She was right there looking at me with questioning eyes. Uh, everyone disappeared. Just now, right? Huh? Panic took hold as the enormity of what had just happened struck me. Unable to control myself, I grabbed Mahiri by her slender shoulders and shook her. Did you see it, Mahiri? You saw it, right? <coughs> huh? Huh? Mahiri's head flopped back and forth from my shaking. <laughs> I didn't see anything! <laughs> you didn't? She's so cute. I stopped shaking her and looked straight into her eyes. She returned my gaze with eyes clear as glass marbles. You saw nothing? Nothing at all? There were people here a second ago, weren't there? There were? Even the store employees are gone. That's impossible by any measure. Of course they are. Her reply didn't make any sense. 
最初からこの辺には誰もいなかったよあ,あ、あそっかオカリンは幻を見てたんだね It was like this when we got here Oh, I know, you're seeing things, aren't you? きっとこの暑さのせいだよトゥッタルー I'm sure it's because of the heat トゥッタルー How could she laugh at a time like this? I always thought she was a bit strange but maybe her brain is actually broken I realized that she couldn't help me With nowhere else to turn, I looked up at the bright blue sky. There wasn't a cloud in sight. The scorching summer sun shone bright through the gaps between Akiba's buildings. Naturally, my eyes drifted to the top floor of Radikon where I had just been a moment ago. There it was, an enormous machine like some kind of satellite embedded into the roof of the building where, not five minutes before, I had found Makisei Kurusu's body in a pool of blood. What happened to her? Just before everyone disappeared, I could have sworn I heard an ambulance siren. Makisei Kurusu might still be in that dark, narrow passageway, cold, bloody, and alone. The thought disturbed me, but the question at the forefront of my mind was... What the hell is that satellite doing there? Right before Dr. Nakabachi's presentation, the building shook like a bomb and explo- uh, like a bomb and exploded. The roof door lock had been broken and beyond it, someone had placed a satellite-like machine shrouded in smoke and glowing dust. When I first saw it, the satellite was on the rooftop. But that's not what, what I- uh, that's not what I was seeing now. This satellite had penetrated the top floor of the building, obliterating the room where Dr. Nakabachi's press conference had been held. It must have fallen out of orbit without burning up in the atmosphere somehow. I knew it was crazy, but what other explanation could there be? The real question was, when did that happen? Mayuri, about that satellite. <sighs> yep. <laughs> what a surprise, huh? What do you mean? What was the surprise? <laughs> It made a huge kaplow sound. A huge kaplow. It certainly did make a sound. But I don't think it was kaplow. I'd say it was more like a zzzz. Did that satellite fall out of the sky? Did it? Do you think any aliens were on board? Had I lost my mind? What I had seen didn't match at all with what Mayuri was saying. Suddenly, nothing seemed real. Had I dreamt it all? Hey, you two. Just then, a uniformed policeman ran up to us, his expression stern. What do you think you're doing here? This area is off limits. You have to leave. We're sorry. First, my good man, let's call you Officer A. I have one question. Officer A? Thousands of people just vanished. You saw it too, didn't you? What are you talking about? Get out of here. I was quickly losing confidence in my own memories. I decided to tell him about Makase Kurisu and get him to call an ambulance, but before I could... Look, I don't have time for your nonsense. The policeman took me by the upper arm and said, No one got stabbed at Roddy Khan. Ooh, what? How could he say that with such certainty? While I was still trying to comprehend the situation, the policeman forcefully led us away. So the only person he said that to was to his friend, so maybe that policeman is part of the organization and he interpreted or he like intercepted his message to his friend. Uh, we were uh, we were escorted up to UPX and released. There were people at UPX like usual. Actually, there were far more people than usual. The place was packed. Just as Officer A had said, Chewy Dory had been blockaded by police so nobody could enter. There was nothing we could do, so we headed back to the lab. And that brings us to the present. I'm baffled. Did the whole hour since the beginning of Nakibachi's presentation really happen? I check online for any news. The net is buzzing about the mysterious machine that crashed into Radikon. All of the major stations in Tokyo, even To TV, are running special bulletins about it. Fortunately, it doesn't look like anyone was hurt, but Chuodori is still closed off. 
Akihabara Station is jammed with reporters and curious onlookers. Nobody has mentioned anything about the disappearance of thousands of people from Akiba streets, nor about Makise Karisu's death. It's all a mystery. A mystery? I see. So that's it. From the sofa, I spring to my feet, a wide grin on my face. Daro and Mayuri uh, turn and stare. This is all an elaborate cover-up by the organization. Their influence has corrupted local law enforcement, which means our entire government may already be under their control. My god. But they underestimated me, for I am not so easily played. One day I will expose their deeds and put an end to their reign. Having come to a satisfactory conclusion, I take a celebratory bottle of Dr. P, my favorite soda from the fridge. What if we just finished the game and he was just like in a um, like a room in a mental institution the whole time and he was just imagining this all in his head? He's, he's a weird dude. The lab has no air conditioning. Ice cold drinks are essential. Ah, elixir and intellectualists. A drink fit for a genius. Man, speaking of, uh... Oh, speaking of drinks, I think that's the reason I'm a little extra tongue-tied today, is I have not had any caffeine today, and I am feeling it. Cole is better. Okarin really loves his Dr. P. I pity the man who knows not the greatness of this beverage. Mwahaha. Step through the curtain dividing its center and you'll enter the heart of the future gadget laboratory, the development room. Just as the name implies, this is the room where we develop future gadgets. Needless to say, it is strictly off limits to outsiders. Yes, I know the setup is cheap. I would much rather have an airlock than a curtain, but our research budget is already scraping the bottom of the barrel. Besides, what's important isn't money, it's ambition. I poke Daru and bid him, follow bid him to follow me into the development room. All of the windows here are weather-stripped with packing tape so it's dim. And hot, almost like a sauna. I've been wanting to buy an air conditioner for the lab, but there's no money for that. We're currently accepting donations. Upon entering the development room, I pick up the lab coat that's lazily draped on the chair and put it on. I always wear a lab coat in the development room, for practical reasons as well as symbolic ones. Daru, however, refuses to wear his. Putting it on and taking it off is apparently too much trouble for him. He can't be bothered to do anything that doesn't interest him. It's men like him who give our generation a bad name. His lab coat, purchased from my own pocket money, I might add, just sits on the shelf. It's never been worn and probably never will be. Daru, is the plan progressing smoothly? Eh? Uh, what plan? Daru gives me a blank look. I sigh and turn his attention to the table in the middle of the room. Sitting majestically on top of the table is a commercial-grade microwave oven. It's significantly larger in newer home models, or then newer home models. The plan as in the plan. Obviously, I'm talking about perfecting gadget number eight. Oh, that. How was I supposed to know what you meant? We've known each other for what, three years now? We went to high school together, and now we're going to the same university. We share an inseparable bond like prison cellmates. He's only been a lab member for two months, though. We were in different classes junior year, and actually, we didn't talk at all. So, two years? Details. The point, that we, the point is, we've known each other a long time. I expect you to keep up with me here. Nope. <laughs> Awkward silence. Man, all I wanted to do was have one of those cool cryptic conversations where we talk about plans and preparations and other important sounding stuff, when no one knows what it means except us. Shot down again. So, are we any closer to figuring out what's wrong with gadget number eight? Yeah, mother. Not yet. So far, the future gadget laboratory has completed a total of eight inventions. As I explained to Alpaca Man, the lab's primary goal is to develop weapons for the war against the Dark Dominion, led by the organization that rules the world from the shadows. At present, we haven't completed any inventions of that sort. On the contrary, we haven't even figured out what we should make. But along the way, we've managed to create some ingenious futurist, uh, future-ish gadgets as a byproduct of our research. It is a fundamental truth of science that great inventions are often created by accident, 
In other words, serendipity. Allow me to introduce our glorious future gadgets. Gadget number one, the bit particle gun. Gadget number two, the bamboo helicam. Gadget number three, could this be Aura Aura? Gadget number four, Moad Snake. Gadget number five, once again I've made a worthless object by Goemon. Gadget number six, the Cyclaloom Saber. Cyclaloom Saber? Eh. Gadget number seven, Ghost in the Ball. <laughs> they can all be seen on the website Daro made, so feast your eyes upon the product of a mad scientist genius. Anyway, our current problem is future gadget number eight, the Phone Wave, name subject to change. Phone Wave is a pretty weak name, so I've added name subject to change to the end until we come up with something better. For the record, it was Mayuri's- Mayuri- I have such trouble with her name. Mayuri's idea, not mine. When a future gadget is completed, the three of us discuss what to name it. I prefer names based on mythology or names with hidden meanings that need extra explanation to understand. Daru thinks my naming style is too ridiculous. He just doesn't have a passion for words like I do. This dude would be the epitome of being on the Reddit subreddit, I am very smart. Like, that's, that's just the tone I'm getting from him. Mahiri can't be bothered to remember difficult names. She says they don't fit in her head. And so our opinions on gadget names are always split. But I digress. The phone wave, name subject to change, is, in short, a remote-controlled microwave. You put food in the microwave before you leave, then on your way back, call the attached cell phone to start the heating process. Voila! Hot food ready for your arrival. So it's basically a piece of junk. A few days ago, however, we discovered that the phone wave, su uh, name subject to change, has a second unintended capacity. Or capability. Blech. Our brave, or possibly just ditzy, Mahiri had made it her daily routine to heat some frozen fried chicken by remote control. Long story short, she was defrosting her beloved juicy chicken number one as usual when the unexpected happened. The chicken came out more frozen than when she put it in. Their microwave refroze the chicken. Since then, Daru and I have been researching the cause. Mayushi has done the situation for many times, but she didn't have to do it for a long time. She didn't have to do it for a long time. We tried copying what Mayushi did, but we just can't reproduce the freezing phenomenon. And when we tried to freeze a banana, it turned out really weird. I just don't get it. Daru, now looking completely fed up with the heat, starts fanning himself in his shirt. I know what he means by really weird. Let's see if we can't make it happen again. Mayuri! Mayuri! Bring forth the bananas! Are you going to turn them into gel banana- uh, gel bananas again? <laughs> That's been bugging me, Mayushi. Can you stop calling them gel bananas? Gel ban- gel bananas? Gel bananas. But gel bananas are gel bananas. I take the bananas from Mahiri and stick the whole bunch into the phone wave. Name subject to change. Why do you have to use the whole bunch? It's a waste of food. Your stinginess could cost us the battle with the organization. That's fine with me. Mayushi always buys the bananas, and now Mayushi can't eat a single one. Next time, we'll only do one banana. But I already put the whole bunch in, so I ignore her hungry complaints. The phone wave, name subject to change, is simple to use. It's a microwave with a phone taped on. The number is already in my address book. I just need to call the phone wave. Now, where did I put my phone? I check my pants and coat pockets. Now, where did I put my phone? I check my pants and coat pockets. Ooh. Now, where did I put my phone? I check my pants and coat pockets. That's just like me when I haven't had caffeine. <laughs> just, like, checking something over and over again. Oh, boy. Let's press the phone triggers button and call... Oh, I can do a thing! I can do a thing! Let's press the phone triggers button and call the cell phone and make a call to the phone wave name subject to change. It allows to confirm the controller settings from config of the system menu, okay? 
Okay, there we go. Jeez, I was just like, I I had to end up looking it up because I'm just like, I don't know how to get the phone to pop up, but this is cool. I can finally actually use it. So open the mailbox, open the address book. I can't access, I'm guessing that's the internet. Okay, so that's all I can do right now. So we got to go into the address book, call the phone wave, and call. I was I was very confused there. I was like going to the configuration. It was saying stuff about the configuration stuff. And then finally I just Googled. I'm like, how do I do the phone trigger? And yeah, there we go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm connected. Hello, this is the phone wave. Name subject to change. This is the voice of Mayushi Guidance, the system Daru program to operate the phone wave. Maybe I should just call her Mayushi, because I, 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 I don't have as much trouble with saying that. Do you hear Mayushi's voice? Be quiet. I'm trying to listen. You can operate the timer from this menu. After pushing the pound button, please enter the heating time in seconds. For example, press pound 60 for one minute. For two minutes, press pound 120. Entering the command properly will cause the phone wave, name subject to change, to function like a normal microwave. Instead, we're going to deliberately mess up and enter 120 pound. Okay. Look at this! Gameplay! I'm doing gameplay! That should do it. This method was originally a simple mistake on Mayuri's part, but it somehow started the freezing process. The phone wave, name subject to change, comes to life. The turntable begins to rotate. Nice turntable, right? It's even spinning backwards. Backwards? I never noticed that. That might have serious implications if we look at quantum critical behavior driven by Hun's rule. Yeah, no. Not Hun's rule? No. Okay. <laughs> I love how Daru just shuts him down. I, I like Daru for that. The three of us wait and stare at the spinning bananas. After 120 seconds pass, the microwave chimes. Mahiri takes the bananas out. I want to call her Mayushi. Gel Gel bananas are ready. Oh, the bananas have become not bananas. Gelatinous blobs coated with a thin membrane. After Mahiri discovered that the phone wave name subject to change had a freezing function, we attempted to freeze a bunch of bananas. This is what happened. It just gets more confusing each time. Daru, you wouldn't mind eating one of these, would you? Of course you wouldn't. It's for science. Your sacrifice will forever be remembered. They look really nasty. The taste doesn't matter. What matters is that you eat it. So come on, Daru, no need to be shy. Break a leg or a stomach and go for it. No way. Fine. Mahiri, the honor shall be yours. But gel bananas are all gloopy, droopy, soft, and squishy. Wait, she already tried one? It had no flavor and wasn't tasty at all. Gloopy, droopy, soft, and squishy. Daru, what do you think? Oh no. Banana. Don't put your dick in it! Soft and squishy bananas, huh? Soft and squishy banana. Mayushi. Oh no. Oh no. Bunu bunu ne, Ew. Te, te, te. Mayushi, say your banana's all soft and squishy for me. You, ugh, ugh, ugh. Darukun, Darukun. Hanaji deteru. Darukun, your nose is bleeding. I take it back. You're not cool. That was gross. That's gross. Iikara, Please just say it. Your banana's all soft and... Don't make her say that, you perv. Daru retreats after I hit him with a tissue box. Mayuri looks at us with an innocent smile. She doesn't get it, obviously. Anyway. 
They're gelatinous, semi-solid state of matter. In other words, there's a possibility that the intermolecular bonds were weakened. What could have partially liquefied the bananas? I've got it. I turn to the whiteboard and write freezing in the middle. Then I cross it out and slap the board with my hand. What we thought was a freezing function is actually something else. A bold statement, if I do say so myself. So why isn't anyone surprised? Now's the time to shout, what did you say? Come on, don't be shy. Their reactions are pathetically weak. Mahiri probably doesn't even understand half of what I said. Uh, we already knew that. Oh. The, pro the problem is, we don't know what it's doing or why it's doing it. If it's the opposite of freezing, then couldn't it be thawing them? What a silly question, Mahiri. What you're describing is just a normal micro uh, normal microwave. Then what is it? We don't know, and that's the problem. He's right. To be honest, I haven't a clue. In any case, there's nothing we can do about it now. It's time for Daru and I to head to Daibu uh, Daibiru. Di oh my gosh, names! Names! There's going to be a seminar at ATF, and we have to be there. It's part of our studies at Tokyo Denki University. Oh, I got mail. Summer credits, basically. We have to attend the seminar and write a report. Okay, 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 okay. Alright, let me open this up. This is exciting! I can actually open this up and do things with this. You know, I'm really sad about dropping my Upa. It's worse than last year when I missed uh, buying Fatty Garo Froggy. Oh, I can... Oh! Okay, so depending on what word I pick... Okay, let's do Upa. Let's reply to that. I feel your pain. Nothing was worth a fortune. Our precious research funds... Oh, that's cool. And then that was the... Yeah, there's that. Okay. Cool. Alright, neat. Come to think of it, what's today's seminar about it again? I looked it up before the summer holiday began. I should have written it down. Behind me is the large unidentified object that crashed into a building near Akihabara Station. The building is under police barricade. No one is allowed to approach, but from a distance, the object appears to be some kind of satellite. As we cross the overpass that connects UPX and Daibiru... Dai... Dai... Oh my god, why can't I say this? Daibiru? Daibiru? I look down to see a huge crowd of people moving through the plaza. There are even some uh, garishly dressed young men and women, the sort you don't us usually see around Akiba. Everyone is walking towards the main street, which is still cornered off. Daru, aren't you going to check out Radikon? No point, can't get close. I've been following the news online, though. There's already a hundred threads about it on at channel. It's huge, man. Oh, so that's why he was staring at his phone earlier. We entered Daibiru, and <laughs> it's just like, I just pause every time I say I'm like, I know I'm not saying it right, and take the elevator to the fifth floor ATF assembly hall. Oh, Man, feel oh, that bah, AC. Bah, 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 I'm alive. Unlike the lab, Daibiru has air conditioning, yet another reason for our diligent participation in the seminar. About the phone wave, name subject to change. I might have found our answer. Oh, thank you, I agree. You know, that name subject to change thing is really annoying. I won't give in that easily. Even if no other lab members use name subject to change, I will carry on until the day we decide its true name. Now's not the time. So what's your latest ridiculous theory? 
What do you mean ridiculous? My genius brain considers every possibility, even those a lesser mind would say breaks the laws of nature. Don't you dare call that ridiculous. So basically, you're just, you're just pulling stuff out of your ass. You can't call that science. Daru, I have a hunch that the phone wave, name subject to change, may be the key to opening Stein's Gate. How is that? Stein's what? You lost me back at Ridiculous, man. A chime signals our arrival on the fifth floor. The elevator doors slowly open. As we step out of the elevator, I bump into someone. I quickly grab the person's shoulder to keep them from falling. I'm sorry. Oh, shit! What? It's a girl, and I recognize her. You! You! Impossible! Chills run down my spine. I stare at her face in disbelief. I saw this girl just three hours ago. So maybe when there was that moment with the, um... What's the word I'm thinking of? The moment where he, there was nobody else on the street, maybe that was some sort of like time, something happened with the time and it affected her not dying, but then the satellite still cra- I'm so confused. Makise Kurisu. Is there something wrong? Kurisu frowns and tries to back away, but I don't let go of her shoulder. My grip tightens. Oh, that's gotta be scary for her. Ow! You. You should be dead. Oh, jeez, that's a nice thing to say. Why are you here? Out of context, that sounds terrifying. And you're even... There isn't a single blood stain on her clothes, and they're the same ones she was wearing when I found her. Only a serious wound could have produced that much blood. Yet, as far as I can tell, she's completely uninjured. Not a scratch. Hey, that hurts. Let me go. Kurisu pushes me away. Then she shoots me a wary glare. I realize I'm, ga I'm gaping in disbelief. What's wrong with you? You're okay? But that's impossible. Someone stabbed you. I saw you lying in a pool of blood. Oh yeah, like Daru, right? He sent him a text. Oh, let me check the phone. See if there is still the outgoing... Oh, can I not check right now? Let me check. Let me see. Okay. So let me see the outbox. Oh, shit! Yeah, there, he never sent... It was... Oh, that's right, because he said when, it, when he pressed down on the button, all of a sudden, the world changed there. Okay, so he never actually sent that. So it's like it never happened. Weird. Okay, cool. That again? Oh, wait, so he did get it. Daru interrupts. Wait, there's something strange about what he just said. What do you mean, again? Oh, shit. I mean, you sent me that email like a week ago, right? I sent you an email? Don't be ridiculous. I saw her dead just three hours ago. Hey, could you not talk about me like that? I'm perfectly fine. Oh, this- I'm wondering if this is the, um... When he said he saw her in the paper a week ago, and she was giving, like, a seminar or something? This- maybe this is the seminar, and that's why he keeps going back in time to try and save her. Whoa, okay. <laughs> what? Okay, I keep getting more confused. You know, that message was kind of weird. It was dated a week after I got it, which means it came from the future. It came from the future? That sounds like something you'd read on the internet, Daru. It's rare for you to talk about ridiculous theories. No, the, de uh, the date was definitely a week later. It came from the 28th. Wait, that's today. Daru pulls out his phone and shows it to me. He's right, the email was sent from my phone. He received it on July 21st at 12.56. But it was sent on July 28th at 12.54. It was split into three mails. Someone stab. Bed Makisa K. 
Urusu, don't. Why did I send such a short message in three parts? And it looks like the third email got cut off. I do recognize the content, though. This is the email I sent you three hours ago. But I sent one mail, not three. And there should be more text. Oh, I wonder if he's gonna pull out his phone and just like I saw, there's nothing there. Did Daru really get this a week ago? Interesting. And then again, he said he mailed it to. He sent him an email. So maybe it's because he's looking at his text messages that he's not seeing it. Suddenly, Kurusu is standing next to me, peering intently at the screen of Daru's phone. Oh, right. The email's not important. Well, maybe it is, but not right now. The real question is why she's still alive. Is she an illusion? An evil spirit? Am I haunted? I don't believe in such unscientific drivel. I am a mad scientist. I timidly reach out to Carissa's face. My fingertips stroke her hair. Oh, dude, weird. Feels silky. Quite the cuticles. Oh. Substance. She has substance. Of course she's not a ghost. How silly of me. All she's getting from his point is him grabbing onto her and then stroking her hair. Creep. <laughs> oh, Karine. Oh, Karine, I don't think that's a good idea. I poke Carissa's cheeks with my fingers. Such softness. Dead bodies don't feel like this. Not that I've ever touched one. Oi. Yeah, just keep your fingers above the, the neckline and maybe just don't touch her anymore. Wait a minute, we already touched when I bumped into her coming out of the elevator. I even grabbed her shoulders before being pushed away. He just wanted an excuse to touch her. And I still doubted that she had substance? That's just proof of how confused I am. If she's alive, then what did I see back at Rodicon? What was that scream I heard? Were they hallucinations, just like that mass disappearance? That's right, she was stabbed. Maybe she's just hiding her wounds. He's like, lift up your shirt. <laughs> oh my god, no. This requires further investigation. He is too. Oh no, oh no. I grab the hem of her blouse and slowly... What are you doing? Are you trying to get yourself arrested? I just want to know the truth. I stare straight back at Kurisu as she trembles with anger and lifts her and lift her blouse a little higher. What truth, you perv? You stupid? Wanna die? She pushes my hand away. Luis Chan's favorite Luis Chan's famous line for the win. Daru shouts something silly, but I ignore him and press Kurisu. I know what I saw. Oh no. No way, did you just see my under- Carissa's face turns bright red, she firmly pulls her blouse down. No, you fool, not that. <laughs> oh, he's such a weirdo. Earlier this afternoon, after Dr. Nakabachi's presentation, someone killed Makise Carissu and left her in a pool of blood. I carefully explained everything that I saw. Wait. Doctor. Dr. Nakabachi? What are you talking about, Okarin? Dr. Nakabachi's presentation was cancelled. Cancelled? Yeah, because of the satellite crash. Something's wrong. Our stories aren't matching. It's the same thing that happened right after I saw the mass disappearance. Mayuri's story didn't match mine. I need to know, am I caught in some sinister plot? Is this another organization conspiracy? <laughs> Excuse me, um... My name is Hoyuin Kiyoma. <laughs> really, man? <laughs> You're hopeless. <laughs> okay, Hoi-san. I'd like to hear your story in more detail. Looks like she finally understands I'm not lying. But I still don't understand why my memories don't match everyone else's. I doubt that I can give her a good explanation. Just then, an older man steps out of the assembly hall. Makise-san, Makise it's almost time. Uh, hi. Oh, right. Thank you. Kurisu glances at me one more time, then sighs and heads towards the small conference room. We should go too. Go where? To hear the lecture, duh. 
Oh, that. Daru follows after Kurisu. Did she come to attend the lecture too? Strange. Why would the girl genius Makase Kurisu need to attend a lecture like this? Alright guys, that will do it for part one of my Steins Gates let Alright guys, that will do it for part one of my Steins Gate Let's Play. So far, I am finding this interesting. I do find time travel stuff to be extra hurdy on my brain, for lack of a better term. Like, I'm already so confused, but I mean, I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. And it's probably going to be quite a while before I find out what's even going on. But I am intrigued and I am excited to find out what is going on and to see what happens next. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you stay tuned for the next part. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!
Special shout out to my top tier patrons Namara Kito, Sparky, Icognito, Simon Rax, Mad Goldsmith, Harry Gaziff, and Asborn Kennedy.